Hi guys, welcome to this video on May in Bloom. My name is May, and if you're new here, I love to talk about all things holistic living, intentional living, infusing some calmness into our lives, and also creation. First of all, I'd like to say Happy New Year to all of you. This is the first video of the year. I hope you transition into this more well-recognized New Year, even though there's different ways to celebrate a New Year or start a New Year. I'd also like to say welcome very, very much to all the new subscribers. I'm really happy to see you here and I hope you find things that are of value and benefit on this channel um, as it evolves and as it grows. I hope that it continues to nourish your soul. At least that's the intention I try to put behind the videos I make here. Okay. So this is our first soul talk of the year and I thought how fitting to talk about how we could have a more holistic and intentional year, um, a balanced and wholesome year in existence in this new chapter. And I think that it would be great to first say that your new year can start whenever never ever stop yourself from the fact of like let's start things on the first of january i think there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of like almost stress that goes into maybe wanting to put intentions or changes for the new year in ways that sometimes maybe give us more pressure um and i always feel that how you start something the energy you started in the intention you have behind it is also a great indicator of how successful or sustainable that goal or approach is going to be you know so with all the things i share and talk about even in my holistic sessions i always make sure that let's create something that is holistically sustainable for you right and so when we are thinking about the new year and beginning a whole new chapter 2024 um it's also nice to start from it from a place of how do i make this holistic how do i make this uh purposeful encouraging compassionately and something that is sustainable because then i know i'm going to continue doing these things or adding to what i want to accomplish with this goal whatever it might be your new year intentions might be um and in that regard i also say that never feel yourself limited to the first of january you can start a new chapter any time of the year and sometimes i like to start new chapters um, in awkward endings of the year, like maybe in December or in awkward beginnings of the year, like maybe mid-January or April or March or even on my birthday, which for me is also another new year, like in May. So that's another thing I just wanted to share before I start in the video, that you can start a new chapter whenever you're never too late. You don't have to wait for the 1st of January and you don't have to give up because you didn't start the 1st of January. Take the time that feels like the best time for you. I feel like it's the best way to guarantee that you will be able to sustain whatever goal that you set for yourself. So beyond that, I wrote down a few tips that I would like to share with you that I practice and try to incorporate in my life that in general have helped me to live a more intentional, holistic and wholesome life. And maybe they're tips that might inspire you on your own holistic healing and living life as well. By the way, I am looking at my new journal for the year, which I really love. It's called Prioritize Your Peace, which is for me an intention of this new year by itself. Like I always like to divide my holistic efforts in the three main pillars of holistic living which is mind body and soul but also i add a fourth one which is surrounding and for me that is like we are beyond just our own physical space but we are also influenced by our environments our community the energy around us um even to the smallest things like how we exist in the world how we adorn ourselves and so forth so the first thing of course we're going to start with is mind and for me when it comes to preparing for a new chapter, new year, intentionality is very important. Like set intentions. Why are you doing this? What's the purpose of doing this? Be authentic about your intentions, whatever it might be, whatever goal you might have. And be clear that your why is important enough that you will want to stick to whatever goal you want to pursue. Whatever goal I have, a vision I have, I want to infuse it in my routines, right? Because if I can infuse it in my daily routines, in my weekly routines, 
it's something that again i'm integrating into my life which will become more easier to attain and because i'm it's not, I'm not seeing it as this big goal but i'm breaking it down in things that are actionable and attainable that i'm spreading out through either the weeks uh the months the quarters of the year everything seems then manageable having that mindset that is geared towards making things smaller attainable on a daily basis and then also making sure that you are making use of the collective energy or the season you're in so in spring for example if you were like oh i like these ideas i like to start this new goal maybe springtime is a better time for me because winter i'm hibernating i am um in a space of cocooning i don't want to be doing new things i'm actually in a process of letting things go and that's another thing we can talk about in setting goals depending on the season and working with that and the energy we naturally have in different seasons we are currently in the winter season and for that season everything is kind of dying and slowing down and hibernating so maybe when you're starting your intentions for the new year it's okay to maybe focus the first part of the year on things you want to let go and leave behind or reset or declutter um, because that's also the energy it's more about the releasing the letting um, go the burying so that's another way you can live in harmony with the seasons and then setting your goals according to those different seasons because you don't exist as an island you're part of a bigger collective starting things around this year because everybody's excited for the new possibility and what is to come what is um, to evolve that energy is something that we are all taking part of and a part of so it can be beneficial to set your intentions in this time where everything is a bit more amplified, the optimism of a new year, of a new chapter, of a blank canvas, and you are riding along that more um, collective wave to also join in and create something that, um, that's going to benefit off that collective high and energy that we're all a part of currently. I like to build off the successes I've had in different things and different things I've wanted to manifest. And then I say, because I can do that, I know I can also do this. Because that was once an idea, I know this will one day also be a reality. Um, so creating confidence, you know? So I like to connect ideas that are very lofty and airy with things that I know are really grounded and achieved and tangible. So once you've done that and you've worked on your mindset and you've broken down your goals and ideas from daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, and then year approach. Don't overdo it. I will also say like sometimes less is more. If you say this is the year I take care of my, my body, this is the year I heal my heart, this is the year I heal a specific issue I've been um, fighting against or trying to hold more space for for better healing, this is the year I change the specific area in my life. Whatever it may be, it's okay if you know you're someone who will get overly overwhelmed. Choose things that feel realistic for you to juggle as many as you want or as few as you want, right? Under the mind, I'll also say that having rituals that make it easier for your mind to flow between the different things that you want to put in place for yourself. Know when your brain is less resistant and know when your brain is definitely not I'm not, I'm, I'm not into whatever you're trying to change right now because I'm overwhelmed. So if you are like the majority of us and you have a nine to five and you know like, okay, I know once I finish work, there's not a lot of um, motivation left for me maybe to work out or to take care of my body, whatever that might be for you, or to meditate or to work on the stuff I love and things that fulfill me in different ways then I'm going to be like strategic and say, when can I fit it in where I know I have the most time and in a way that is sustainable. So I'm not going to be like, every day I'm going to wake up at six o'clock and put in three hours because I know myself, I'll hate, I'll hate that after a week or two, <laughs> you know? And then from that exhaustion and sense of failure and disheartenment, it will be hard for me then to continue. i be like, scratch that goal. So no, thyself. <laughs> but I know that if I tell myself, I'm going to dedicate at least 30 minutes every day to write on my book or 30 minutes every day to go for that walk or 30 minutes every day to be on my mat and do some kind of physical activity. I can definitely do that. I know I can do that. I know that it's manageable. And sometimes I also tell myself in the scope of 24 hours, 
30 minutes is absolutely nothing um, to do something for my mind or something for my dreams and goals or something for my body. When I have that in perspective, I'm like 30 minutes is totally doable. And then maybe you can have small 20 minute segments, you know, like I like to, for example, say in the morning, I try my best to go for a walk movement and i try myself the best i can to have a quiet morning so that means i'm not waking up grabbing my phone except to switch up the alarm um i'm not having things in my ear i'm just being present at least for the first hour i call it like a silent hour and i can go for a walk i can work out i can do it i'm just present and then then i know that okay before i sit down i usually try to have two hours before i work and i work from home so those hours are not spent like prepping food to go somewhere or, or commuting so that's something that i try my best to take advantage of but even when i had to commute and go somewhere to work i'll then say that okay what time do i need to wake up to have at least 30 minutes or like for example i want to walk, walk and take care of my body so maybe i'm going to walk to work or get off early as i can do a bit of walking whatever i can do whatever i can fit it in i try to be realistic work with what i know is true about me work with the least amount of resistance and for me i have the most energy in the morning so i'm gonna put like the more brainy stuff or the things that i need to do even at work at my work work i try to do them as early as possible so even for your goals and your intentions do them at the place where you feel like that's the place you're gonna have the most energy to do it work with what you have and where you are i know we live in a weird world where it sucks that we have to fit in between like making a living and caring for ourselves but don't let that dishearten you see it as challenge accepted how do i fit a few minutes here and there and you'll be surprised how 20 minutes 30 minutes maybe two times of that one hour adds up after a week after a month after a year and if you create smaller manageable routines that you add into your unthinkables meaning that you don't have to think about it i wake up i put on my clothes i go for a walk i wake up i get on the mat i do something i sit at the computer i put my 30 minute timer on i type or work on something if i know that i can sustain that and every day i put in those 30 one hour one hour and a half whatever you can do and it can be different depending on where you are in life then you know that eventually those things are going to add up right and it's better to have that goal than doing something extreme there's a lot of extreme like change your life in three months change be unrecognized these things are entertaining and i think a lot of people love to watch them because we would all love like a, a cheat code but what we've lost in the way we live our life currently is the appreciation of letting things simmer letting things grow and letting things build roots within your life within who you are and sometimes those are the things that are easier to sustain and carry out because they are fastly put into your ground who you are your foundation and you've put the time in consistently that they become a holistic part of you it's not just a fade experience you know that you do extremely for a few months and then maybe you fall off for whatever reason but you know that getting those few months it was so extreme and hard that it's so overwhelming you can't go back to any change and you just give up <laughs> you know um and i say that because i've tried different things throughout my life and i've tried that method as well and my goal is always how to integrate things into a lifestyle of health of well-being of abundance wholesomeness whatever it might be how do i add that integrate that holistically because i always say whatever i want to have it's not going to be momental it has to be something that is a something i see long term and because i see long term i want it to be built with that with longevity in mind right with sustainability in mind i hope that all of this is making sense <laughs> um okay so that is mindset and setting up routines and making things that are in your routine so that you know how to sustain them um and also like just before we leave the mind area i'll also say that I've shared with you guys in another video about making different um, with vision boards or manifestation tools. And another thing I like to do for each year is have like a vision board. And I created one this year as well. I usually use Pinterest now before I was using physical things. And then I went to using like um, cutting up things, but more digitally. And now I just make a vision board, literally like pinning things I want to experience. 
So I have created that and I created that last year before the new year. I started like envisioning what do I want to see happen in my life? What do I imagine experiencing? What are the goals I want to accomplish this year? Either like you can use the ones I have for my manifestation tools as inspiration or any vision board that for you, you can look at. And I always have my pin interest open as one of my tabs. So I like to look at it like almost on a daily basis. I'll go through it. I read the affirmations I've kept there and I'll just be in those spaces i like visual things because i'm a very visual person and i respond very um strongly to visual things so having something that i can look at that i can review over and over again that becomes more and more like i can even like recall it if i just close my eyes like that is so important for me and people don't talk about this a lot because our society is so focused on just success like you succeeding you reaching the goal and then if you fail or you don't reach something fully there is this kind of like you handle that shame by yourself there is like a huge number of new year resolutions that don't work out and there's a reason for that that's why i also don't call this a new year's resolution because we're having lifestyle changes you know <laughs> we're not doing resolutions um and lifestyle changes like i said can always be applied can always be worked towards so what i like to do is also have a good relationship with the concept what if this doesn't work what if i fall off the wagon on this people who succeed are just people who are really good at not giving up so don't be somewhere where you feel like it's easy for you to give up because you just want a perfect streak of good habits or um good effort towards your goal but see yourself as someone who's dedicated to persistently getting up and continuing and for continuing as long as you can even if you do things imperfectly it's sometimes better than not doing them at all don't have a perfectionistic mindset when you're trying to change your life or change or work towards a goal have a realistic compassionate uh, mindset which also integrates moments of feeling like failure or jumping off the wagon but being able to get up and continue nonetheless. I think we discourage a lot of people from trying because we make change feel so hard, so unattainable, so extreme, so radical, and also so unforgiving. And it has to be perfect to be a beautiful success story. I woke up one day and I decided never again, and I never did. And therefore my life is the way it is. Like those kinds of story make us feel a certain way. But I want to make more space for stories such as I woke up, I decided I needed to change my life. I did it for the next three months and then I fell off. But then I got back again and I've been doing so for the next one year. And I've had maybe like three, four months off. But at least that is more months than I had the year before. And I'm building on that progress. That doesn't feel maybe as exciting as wow. It doesn't feel like a movie, but that's life. <laughs> And I'd rather you have a holistic approach and a compassionate and realistic approach to your goals than to pursue perfection and then be discouraged when you don't meet that perfection. I'd rather you have a year where you maybe wanted to ideally train all 12 months, but you only managed to do six or you only managed to do nine and you don't see that as a failure, but you see that as something that is encouraging for you to keep building on to next year to learn from and a tune in a way that makes it more sustainable for the whole year, the year that comes next. Um, when I say that, I feel like because we are so geared towards having perfection or having this miracle approach or this miracle ointments are going to fix everything, we miss out on the ones that are more gentle to us and therefore more sustainable and more life changing because they're not so high and mighty in their perception, in their um approach or in what they promise sometimes <laughs> less impressive is more impressive in the long term the next part is body mind is very important because i always feel like it's from the mind that everything else is built when it goes to body and soul and surrounding it's not as intensive in detail because once you have your mindset, your reasons why, your approaches, then everything else can feel a bit easier. I think here the greatest tip I can give is it's great every day if you can do something for your body. And my body is also doing a lot of stuff like working on the computer, taking me places, cooking, showering, all of that. I need to make sure that I have space in my day to honor my body and take care of it, to build its muscle, its flexibility, um, and also to release pent up stress or worry 
or anxiety so that it has a clean canvas to work from. Something that we did that was really nice that we want to make as a tradition is last year, um, like for December, for our presents, we wanted to give each other experiences. And so my experience gift was that we went to a spa day. We had a spa day the last weekend of the year. A spa day where we went, we had like massages, we um, went into the sauna, we had like warm baths, cold baths, and like just reset the body, do something beautiful for the body, release, let go. And we really loved it and we're like, let's definitely make this um, a tradition as a way to end the year in whatever way we can do it something for the body to release to let go to refresh and then like almost transition the new year in a new body in a new state of mind you can do that in many different ways it doesn't have to be a full spa day but just even if maybe you and your partner you and your friends you give yourself you create a little spa day where you do this thing for each other but the idea is doing something to honor your body and doing something to appreciate your body and for it carrying you through a whole year the journeys it's been the walks it's been the food it has to process um the love it's given the heartbreak it's processed the tears the joy there's something beautiful about recognizing a space of honoring that your body can do all of that for you and your body is doing all of that for you it's every day i want to make space to honor my body in a certain way right that was like either through the daily routines where you have some movement you can dance whatever you like so choosing activities that feel easy and enjoyable so having favorite activities that you can do daily that honor your body, that take care of it. And don't set a crazy amount of time. You might think like, I'm going to do an hour and a half of strength training. Some people are about their life and some people can sustain that lifestyle. What I like to do is what is something I have less resistance towards to do every day. I started at 10 minutes actually, but now I've worked myself to 20, 25 minutes a day. Doesn't seem like a lot. And the vision with that is when your mind no longer feels like 20 minutes is a lot or 25 minutes is a lot, maybe next year you say 30 minutes because that feels more natural for you. Like I can definitely do 30 minutes. I can definitely do one hour. But again, as I said, you spread it out, you integrate it, you let it come into your life slowly, right? But then like continue practicing this. What do I do for my body every day? And because you have a menu, you can see how you're feeling each day. Maybe you don't have it in, in you to do like a, a little fitness routine or like to go dancing. But you're like, I can definitely do some stretches today. I'm gonna look up a video for 20 minutes or just see what comes natural to me, get my mat out and find a comfortable place and do that. And just do that, right? Find your menu of things you like, your body responds well, something that's playful, enjoyable, and doable. I like hiking, I like walking, I like yoga, I like dancing, I like skating. So those are all activities and forms of sport <laughs> that I can just ask, which ones would my body feel good doing today? After I've done my morning routine and it's time for me to dress myself, this is something I always talk about as well carry yourself and adorn yourself in a way that makes you feel aligned with the kind of way you want to exist in the world and the kind of way the energy you want to attract and live amongst in the world so i try to also incorporate that in how i dress the things i buy the fabrics i like to wear the colors i love to wear like things that make me feel aligned with the kind of life and the space i want to exist within right so adorn yourself from the day to inhabit the kind of life uh the kind of things you aspire to live in and this is also helpful when you go shopping or when you're trying to add more things to your life it can be even for your house or eating right knowing that okay how do i engage with the goal in how i shop how do i engage with my goal in the way i dress in the way i shop for the clothes i wear um in the way i decorate my space in the way i keep my space make your space beautiful make your space beautiful to be in make your space aligned with the life you want to live if you want to live a life that's more organized that you feel it has more space for you to do what you want to do in quote unquote be productive make it easy for you to be productive you know like have a clean space so that you're not spending time procrastinating while cleaning um if you want to live with more ease and more balanced make sure you have a space that reflects that like Incorporate those things in the way you dress, 
in the spaces that you live in and so forth right so that is both body but also surroundings as well and then there's also like the element of food when we're talking about it we can't neglect food um and i'll say also of course be intentional about that but i also in in alignment with the new year and decluttering because i'm trying to follow more the theme of the season that we are in which is like letting go resetting restoring i want to do like a 10 day 11 day reset so i'll talk more about food in a whole other video by itself i'll say for the soul sometimes it can be hard for the soul and mind because people seem feel like it's the same and integratively everything is one so you know that okay holistically this is how i like to live in unity but then i separate it in what i do for my mind what i do for my body what i do for my soul and what i do for my surrounding and in soul what i really like to say is making space to spark that sense of vitality Rastafarians have an approach to life called aita living eating an idle diet which is also about eating life giving foods and i think for our soul we can be inspired by that in the sense of what are you doing to inspire life and to bring life it can be anything like engaging with art creating art like creating things that make me feel like oh i am exploring my creative side i am giving life to my soul in the things I create, the things I do, and making sure that those things are feeding my soul, having healthy relationships with people around me, and engaging with conversation, even if it's just content, that make me feel like, oh yeah, I see life differently, I feel less alone in the world, I feel purposeful in the way I move through life, you know? anything that enriches your soul again adding that to a daily practice for you more importantly i think the best thing you can do for your soul is make life enjoyable and take whatever little enjoyment you can have wherever it can be it can be even like in a form of a question whatever you're doing you know, like how could i add more life to this thing i'm doing how could i add more presence more enjoyment <laughs> um to what i'm doing that by itself can go a long way because it makes you feel like life is safe to be in life is worth living the way the world is guys i really feel like we are responsible for doing that for ourselves because this earth this society there's a lot of things going on that are trying to like portray more death more whatever the opposite of idol is you know like destruction despair and you have to infuse your your soul with hope um with inspiration with kindness with compassion with fun with joy you have to do that and you have to do that religiously to almost balance out our overall environment and the way it functions and what it feeds off right which is not going to be you, your vitality but we need to help balance those energy out as individuals as communities as people who care about the world we live in and how we live in it, right? So that's also another one. The last thing is obviously surrounding. And this one, I talked about it a bit, but I would say like with surrounding is being purposeful about what surrounds you from things to people to energy, whatever that is. Be mindful of the things that you have around you and that impact on you as a being. All of this can impact the way you live your life how close you are to living more in tune and more peaceful a more wholesome a more nurturing life than a more destructive whatever the opposite of all of those might be make sure you have relationships that are fulfilling equally beneficial relationships that make you want to be a better person relationships that are with people who also have similar goals for example, for me, it's very important to have relationships with people who are kind, who are considerate, who see the best in other people, um, and who also do their best to be the best for other people that they can be, be kind, be considerate, be loving, be compassionate, who try their best to be authentic and vulnerable and honest beings as best as they can in the capacity they can who have compassion for themselves because i know when you have compassion for yourself it's also easy to have compassion for other people so surrounding yourself with people who are embodying the things that you value as well or the things you want to be better at embodying for this new year this new chapter in your life um one thing that i've also been working on is accepting 
and I also have sessions where I'm talking to people about this like when you're maybe like waiting for a space to um, have a kind of romantic relationship or even platonic relationship and some of us can be so eager to have certain things that we don't appreciate having nothing than something that is more to, that is not what we want right like and it can be in, in romantic relationships and sometimes we call these relationships the rebound or this placeholder nobody wants to be anybody's rebound a space holder and interesting in life this goes not only to people and relationships but even things like if i want a specific thing or a specific shoe or a specific appliance that i want to do a specific thing sometimes you might be like oh, i'm just gonna buy anything because i've been looking a long time and i'd rather have this um and then then wait to find what i'm really looking for or get what i'm really looking for sometimes you might buy that something because it's better than nothing but then that's something that was taking up space it's a, it's adding clutter to what you actually want and what you actually needed to have you spend resource on this thing um instead of like saving that resource for what you really want right and in simpler terms and this does apply because this is also part of surroundings if you want a specific jacket or a specific boot for example like right now i'm looking for a specific um hiking boot that is something that i can use in different environments um and different uh landscapes that's going to be comfortable to wear because i i look when i want something and i set my mind on something specific I'm going to spend a lot of time also looking and put time aside to look whether it's online or in shops and then like not settling for anything than the thing that will make me go exactly that's what I want because I know when I have that that stuff is going to last longer it's going to be more purposeful I'm going to take care of it in a different way and that need will be fulfilled exactly in the way I wanted it fulfilled instead of saying like oh I can't find it but I'm gonna just wear this i'm gonna buy this thing and i'll have it until i find the ideal one i'm already buying that thing from a place of it's not what i want but it's what i can get right now that energy for me is an energy that i'm trying to avoid <laughs> in this new phase of my life and really stay true to what i really appreciate in myself or in the way i attain things whether they are actual things or relationships i'd rather have no one let's say like friendship wise I'd rather have no friend than having a friend for the meantime, if that makes sense. I'm at that place now where that is better for me than having maybe a friend or having a partner romantically that is like, oh, that will do. For no, nobody deserves to be that. <laughs> but also have faith and have trust enough to be in the nothing before the everything that you want, you know? And that is the way that we also care for our surrounding. If you want a specific furniture, if you want a specific um, pillow, if you want a specific duvet, hold out for what you really want rather than settling for that will do for now. But maybe it's a me thing. Maybe you guys are good, okay, with the things and looking at it every day and be like, it's not really what I want it, but it will do. <laughs> um, I really, it's something that bothers me in the long term caring for that space like if it's a person because you're not gonna go out and buy the maybe the best friend you want or the best uh romantic partner you want then i'd rather say or the community that you want i'd rather say i'm gonna spend the time caring for the space that i want this relationship to happen in um and caring for the space i want uh for this appliance one day to to have space in right um and spend my energy and resource on that rather than like taking on something that is just something i settled for make sure you, you surround yourself with things that bring you a sense of joy and beauty um and enjoyment as well like to continue on that theme and take good care of those things right take care of your home take care of your your clothing regardless of how many how few you have the amount of money you paid for it reflect on the things you already have the relationships you already have, the friendships, the community you already have, and assess how you're caring and showing up for those things. Are you somebody who is somewhere where when you have a relationship, when you have a friendship, when you have a job, when you have an opportunity that takes great care and appreciation for that thing that you maybe one day were hoping for, wishing for, praying for. Um, and are you good at also enjoying that part, not just the part of gaining and receiving, but the 
part of nurturing and caring for and making sure that something has longevity, sustainability in your life, right? I think that's a really good place to end because we start the year with wanting and wanting to be open to receive. But I hope that we also take with us the ability to tend to how do I become better at tending what I already have if it's my health, if it's my joy, <laughs> if it's my peace of mind, if it's my friendship, my family, my love, whatever you have, the appliances you have, how do I become better at tending to and adding more value to what I already have so that I also prepare a beautiful environment for the things I want to add more to my life, you know? And how do I also become really good at decluttering and editing and assessing when things are no longer serving me, when things have honorably fulfilled their purpose in your life? How do I become good at letting go when it's time to let things go? Whether that's people, to things, um, to opportunities, you know? Having a good relationship and how you tend to what you have and how you manage what you have in all its holistic meanings is also a very important thing to practice. And mostly in all things, I think I'll close with saying, see everything as a practice. This is your first time on earth as you, <laughs> in the conditions you're in, have some grace, have some compassion. And instead of saying, sometimes I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, say, I'm going to practice being good at doing X, Y, and Z. Let's say, for example, if you want to believe that you are, see your own beauty and appreciate your own beauty, but you have a lot of self-loathe and you hate yourself. Instead of saying, I am beautiful, my brain will be like, no, I'll say like, I am practicing to see the beauty in myself that is open, that's allowing, that's inviting that is progression rather than perfection. And so I try to do the same with goals, you know? I am practicing being more attuned to my daily routines. I am practicing being more productive so I have more energy and space and time to relax and do the things I love. I am practicing, I am allowing more peace of mind. I am allowing more, more ease and slowness into my life. I'm allowing better relationships into my life, you know? All of those things open doors. They allow with intention, they invite, you know, with a soft open hand rather than a tight grip of anxiety and fear, right? And they're more compassionate and gentle towards ourselves. They're therefore also sometimes easier to achieve because of that. Anyway, guys, it's been a long ass video. I am going to end it here. I really hope that this soul talk has been of benefit. If you've made it this far, I would really love to hear what you are practicing and what you want to have more of in your life. And you know what? Let's make it a bit fun. If you are open to it, I would like to give one of you something special. It's not something big, <laughs> but something personal from me. And I'd love to send it to you. That would be really nice because I think I've never, I've done that once, but I haven't done that in a long time. It's time to celebrate. We've made it to 4,000. My channel is monetized, <laughs> finally. It's a great moment to celebrate and I would love that for you. So write in the comment section what you are open to practice this year and I will pick one of you and let you know in an upcoming video and send something sweet and special to you. Otherwise, may this video be of benefit to whoever needs it. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing here and well done for making it this far. I wish you a lovely start of the new year. Bye guys.